Hello and welcome back to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Welcome to another Hogback Driver Assistance Challenge and welcome to the first time we are running Super Cruise in our test. This is the brand new GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate. First of all, awesome that you can get pickup trucks with adaptive cruise and lane centering and all that stuff. This one has hands-free eye tracking Super Cruise. We've never run Super Cruise in this test, and I actually requested this truck for a very interesting reason, I hope. Very soon, we'll be following up this video with a Chevrolet Bolt EUV, also with Super Cruise. That one doesn't do all the lane changes and all the stuff, so I want to see how does the full baked version of Super Cruise, this is similar to what you get in the Cadillac Escalade and others, how does this hold up to the Bolt EUV Premier, which is the trim where you can get uh, Super Cruise in its light form. So let's run this truck up I-70, the hardest and only standardized driver assistance testing on YouTube and see how well it does in our subjective opinion and our objective points measuring. <laughs> This is the $80,000 Sierra Denali Ultimate. And while this is not a review of the whole truck, I just have to show you how nice this thing is. Trucks have gotten freaking awesome. We have the stellar 6.2 liter V8 under the hood. This thing screams. Um, we have a 10 speed auto. The problem is it just feels a bit old school. I drive a Rivian R1T personally, which I would consider to be the next generation of truck. And even though this is one of the most powerful combustion engines you can get in a truck, you know, we're not talking Raptor R or TRX world. Uh, it feels so slow. I mean, you put your foot down and the thing just doesn't move. It's like, okay, we figured out electric motors and torque work for trucks. This is like ultimate luxo spec in a truck. We have these huge wheels, not good for off-roading. We got a bed back here. This is like what, you know, the head honcho at the job site's gonna be driving. And guess what? It's freaking nice. I would drive this every day. Actually, if I didn't have an electric truck, this is what I would be rolling in. And um, fairly good fuel economy, I've noticed, but this review is not so much about the truck. We are talking about Super Cruise. Now, we could have chosen an Escalade, a CT5, or others. What's interesting is GM's actually running out of Super Cruise chips, and they're removing it from a whole bunch of vehicles. The Sierra Denali Ultimate, the Yukon Denali Ultimate, I think that will be coming soon, will have Super Cruise. Right now, I think the Escalade is the only full-size SUV with it. Um, but Super Cruise has been the hot topic. I have a lot of friends that review cars for a living, automotive journalists, and they keep telling me this is the best system on the market. You got to do Super Cruise because it's just better than everything else. And I've driven on Super Cruise and we've made videos together with Super Cruise and I've never had that impression from my driving experience. To me, it's, it's a little bit annoying. The big red flag is it only works on pre-mapped highways. From a user standpoint, that's so annoying. My Rivian's the same way. Also why we chose I-70 Hogback as the starting point because of systems like this. Ford's Blue Cruise is also hands-free, but here's how they got around it not being annoying. Ford's Blue Cruise system will still do Copilot 360 lane centering on roads that are not pre-mapped. So where I live in Northern Colorado, where there's not many pre-mapped highways that I wanna use adaptive cruise and lane centering on, in the Ford system, it's fine, I just have to touch the wheel. In GM system, the most annoying thing about this is there's no, like, it's either hands-free or you're not getting lane centering if you're not on a pre-mapped road. So driving around all the back roads, you have to steer. It'll thankfully still do adaptive cruise. However, that's been my issue with Super Cruise. Um, so many people tell me that this thing just rocks. So I am expecting it to do really well. Again, this is the fully baked version that does automatic lane changes. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna jump in the truck we're gonna walk you through our points system. We have an objective scoring system. We're gonna let you know everything that this thing does right off the bat. And then we're gonna go out on the highway, see what happens when we don't pay attention to simulate an unresponsive driver and score its safety in this category. And then we're gonna get it out and run the full hog back. It is raining today. It's the best day we have to do this, really the only day. It goes back to GMC tomorrow. And uh, that might put it at a slight disadvantage. 
we decided, hey, rather than no video, let's shoot the video because if it can perform well on the hogback in the rain, first hogback we've done in wet conditions, then this will be a stellar system. And just off of my quick experience driving it over here, I think it's a pretty freaking awesome system when you're on pre-mapped highways. So let's jump in, do all the stuff, and see how this compares to the Bolta UV, which we'll have in an upcoming video. First of all, the seat massage is awesome. Yep, gotta turn mine on. One right of now. the best seat massagers <laughs> in any vehicle. The way to control it is the annoying one. Yeah, <laughs> but we won't we'll get into that now. Basically, it pulls up stuff on the screen and it doesn't let you touch the screen. You gotta use the seat controls. Super dumb. That's pretty dumb. But great place to sit, got wood, leather. We're happy. Can't wait for electric Silverado and Sierra <laughs> to come. Yeah. But we're looking at the basically what the truck has to start off in terms of driver assistance because obviously most of this is the test out driving. But first of all, it can earn points in our test for what it has from the get-go. So does it have a capacitive wheel? No. No. So it requires torque to... Well, it actually requires eyesight. Eyesight, yeah. And then it responds secondly to torque. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, driver safety eye tracking. Yes. Yep. Driver uh, hands free eye tracking. Yes. Yep. And it's not limited to pre mapped highway. No, it is their own pre mapped highway, so it gets a couple points docked off there. So, how does that point structure work for us so again? We give it five points for hands free eye tracking, and then yeah. we deduct two if it's limited to two pre mapped, pre -mapped highways. Yeah. But there should be a special category, which is like it limits the entire use of this vehicle of lane centering to only pre mapped highways. Yeah. And that can be our editor's input note down okay, at the bottom. Okay, that's an editor's input yep, for me. For that's sure. that's annoying. I agree. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then does it adapt to speed limits automatically? Nope. Nope. Um, and does it have adaptive system aggressiveness? Nope. So, none of that. And automatic lane changing, yes. Yes. Without user input, yes. yes. And it does a great job at choosing which lane to be in. Yeah. I've only had to tell it nope one time when another guy was coming over at the same time we were. Yeah. It didn't ask me if I was okay with paying for tolls. It just <laughs> went all the way over for me. <laughs> Toll lane? <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, it's got the pass. Yep. Yep. Um, and then the biggest question for a lot of people is like for critical safety, what if you become unresponsive? Well, this is the point we try to drive home because I think safety is number one with all of these assisted driving functions. Yeah. And this seemed to do a pretty good job, which we'll show you now. We are locked in on Super Cruise right now. I'm looking ahead. So what I actually need to do to fool the system, because it'll just go all the time, is not look ahead. So Jordan, you're gonna be in charge of monitoring the road for me. Do I am not do this ahead. at home, this is very sketchy. I am looking away and I'm keeping an eye somewhat looking forwards. So it's flashing green, right? Yep. I can see that out of the corner of my eye. I know audible warning. It's buzzing the seat. This has gone red. What do the messages say? Super Cruise disengaging, take vehicle control. Okay, but it's still going, right? Yep. Please take control of the vehicle now. Oh, it said, please take control of the vehicle now. It's braking, braking, braking. No one's behind us yet. And I have to accelerate. Flashers went on. Flashers went on. Nice. So my guess is it would come to a stop or close to. Um, we can't actually safely test that because this is only working on pre-mapped roads. Normally we do this test on side roads uh, and I have to just exit off and go back to where we're going. This thing rips though. It just needs to be way up in the rev range to boogie. Um, yeah, so on side roads, typically we can have it go all the way to stop and some systems crawl along at five miles an hour. Some put them in park, some do different things. It's probably not safe enough for us to test that unless it's the middle of the night. So maybe we'll be able to get that test in and update this video, but at least for now, this is as good as we got. So, that was good. Um, did it yank the seatbelt at all? No yanking no. of the seatbelt, just but, vibrating of the seat. But it shakes the seat, which this is like the only system that shakes the seat. GM loves to shake the seat. <laughs> and we'll talk about it on the drive too, but when it does auto lane changes, it shakes the right or the left side. That's pretty cool. Depending on which way you're going. So no exterior horn, but it did throw on the hazard lights. And yep. we looked up later, it does bring you to a complete stop. Um, and it does not pull over to the shoulder. And, no system does. Yeah, no system does. And actually I looked up the engineer behind the system said no to that because they figured it'd be safer in case there was no shoulder. 
which yeah. in the future maybe we'll look to see if there is a shoulder. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's it for the points. Let's go drive. Okay, so let's go drive this thing. So um, Super Cruise was, I would say, the first hands-free system that was publicly accessible, right? Yeah. Because Blue Cruise came later, and then uh, what else is there? Are those the only two? I guess. For level two driver assistance with eye tracking? Yeah, because BMW does it only in traffic. Yeah. And Mercedes does it only in traffic. This goes up to 85 miles an hour in this mode. That's so let's kick good. on the other cameras. We'll pull up the other views for you guys. There we go. And a, and a slight drizzle today. Not too bad. Yeah, beautiful weather. We don't get this very often. No, we don't get much range. It, uh, range. <laughs> rain. We have a lot of <laughs> you range. Yeah, EVs on your mind. <laughs> yeah, 362 miles, and I've not been driving this so easily. Uh, and we have nearly a full tank right now. Yep just filled it up for this test and um, right so what are the things that we're really going to be looking for on this test Jordan so we're going to deduct a point if Kyle has to take over for safety like if the car is just not driving well not staying within its lane and he has to take over deduct a point and we deduct two points. burning rubber <laughs> pick up trucks and rain feels good <laughs> yeah America <laughs> I love this drivetrain it may not be the fastest but it sounds awesome yeah and we'll deduct um, two points if it disengages with a warning. So if the system just decides it can't keep up, disengages, we'll deduct that. And then three points if it disengages with no warning, which I don't think it does. I think it always warns you, which is nice. So we try to get locked in the system by the time we hit the speed limit sign. So let's go on right here, 65. I don't see the steering wheel icon popping up. We'll set the distance to closest. And it says, why aren't we super cruising? Super cruise lockout, see owner's manual. What? Oh, because we did not shut it off. Oh. From when we, because we idled when yeah. we shot this intro. Yeah. And we, you know, looked. I looked away from the system and we let it do its thing. <laughs> so we got to turn around, go back. We'll take the back road back. <laughs> and we'll meet you back on the on-ramp after we cycle the power. <laughs> we're, in, we're in super cruise jail right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Same old V8. There we go. Hit the rev limiter on that shift. Nice. <laughs> and we're back up to speed. So usually by this side, we like to be all locked in. And so what I'm going to do is actually go two lanes over. I'm going to lock in the speed here to the speed limit, 65 and 5. And now we're just waiting for Super Cruise road information. So it thinks that this is not mapped right now, but we're gonna wait for a steering wheel to pop up. It's so annoying. We know for sure this road is mapped. Yep. We've used Rivian's and Blue Cru and Ford's Blue Cruise system on this road. And it says no road information right now. So we're still letting it think. Watch it just not be able to do the hog back. That would be really bad. That would be really <laughs> bad. <laughs> what the heck? It would score really well, because how many points does it have right now? 20. 20, and we wouldn't be able to, to, to deduct anything. <laughs> <laughs> Best score yet. Okay. Just not happening. But we just did it on the other side of I-70. I wonder where it stops. Let me see if there's a super... Cruise. Super cruise map? Yeah. Well, we just did it, literally, if we went the exit going the other way, it worked. Yeah. And it just says, no, unavailable, no road information. It's possible it just doesn't work on the hard section on the hogback. That's them just being... Pansy. That's not the lack of road information. That's a lack of system confidence, if that's the case. We've never had this issue before. Yep, no road information. We'll update you if it changes. Accor according to them, this is mapped for Super Cruise. This is mapped for Super Cruise. Yep. No, sir. Heck, we have service to the car and everything. Not that I think it matters. Maybe we should get on I-70. And exit earlier. And exit earlier where it worked. And then we'll try and turn it on. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back there. Oh, wait, it just kicked on. What the heck? And now, wait a second. 
driving in exit lane. We're not in the exit lane. Dismiss. There we go. We're on. Okay. I'm taking two points away for that. Yeah. Most cars don't have any issues back there, but that... Oh, no, that was weird. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so let's see how this does. We have it set at the speed limit. And we're cruising along, and it's just eye tracking. So I don't... I'm here to cover the wheel, but I don't technically need to. So far, it hasn't really merged into... Did the, really well there. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. No ping pong. I'm just going to drop the head up display position a little bit. So we're coming up on this truck. It's braking. It says auto lane change. Looking for an opening. It's merging over very slow. And now it better go hard throttle. Got a little confused there. And now it's hard throttle-ish. <laughs> really pretty I slow. I would be <laughs> wide open throttle with the people coming up behind us. But it's okay. We got up to speed back at the speed limit it must have must be seeing this truck up in the distance because normally it would immediately go back to the right lane yeah. that's pretty good then yep I would say the one thing I wish that this system did a little bit better job of is scooching when other trucks are around and things like that I wish it would move over a bit yeah but wow, I love the green light here. It's very communicative as to everything is good. Flashing means you got to pay attention. I've noticed that I have such squinty eyes and I was driving pretty into the sun earlier. And so I was really squinting that, um, yeah, didn't love it. Maybe it just wants to drive in the middle. I'm going to just force a, a change lane, a lane change request yep. to the right. Does really good lane changes. Mid corner, a little slow. Come on, get over there. Still doing it. Okay, so I try and compliment you, and then you take forever. It says complete. Uh, I just want, we typically drive in the right lane during this test to see how it handles on ramps and off ramps. And uh, yes, yeah, yeah, seeing if it just darts that way. Didn't even it flinch. Looks ahead pretty well, I think. Looks ahead. Really curious to see how the Bolt EUV does. The, the lane change is such a nice feature. Yeah. Such a nice feature. So the EUV with the Super Cruise Lite, you can't even do a lane change to tell it to. No, it won't, it won't do, do it any lane changes. Yeah. There, it kind of felt a little bit. Yeah, but I think that was more than acceptable. Nothing yeah. to deduct a point for. Oh, no, yeah. This truck is just awesome. Just throwing my massage back. Actually, I, I got mine the, going right now. I'm switching mine to need. To need. <laughs> oh, I'm going to try the need profile as well, actually. So roll, need. How do you actually do this? I'm hitting all four buttons and it's not going. Yeah. Oh, it says look forwards. Sorry for looking at the screen. <laughs> Massage, roll, need. There we go. Let's try this one. The clouds are awesome. The Wow, the scenery today is stunning. Super nice. And so here we get into some of the tough stuff. This is really tough because it's a long corner with an exit ramp if it follows the right line. Ambulances are never a good sign because that could mean traffic. Wow. That was the really smoothest, good. The smoothest we've ever experienced. That was fantastic. We've had a few do really well right there. Yep. But this did really well. Yep. Whoa. Super Cruise. So this is what people tell me all the time. I've driven Super Cruise and I, I'm always frustrated because I seem to drive it in areas where it just won't activate. That's the issue. If you live in a rural area where there is no Super Cruise roads, why have it? Why ha It's not useful unless you're driving on pre-mapped roads. So you found a website that shows what's pre-mapped? Yep. What's the website? Uh, I think it was Cadillac's website. Oh, Cadillac's website. Cadillac.com, yep. Okay. So, so let's find a Super Cruise road near you. Great. Well, that's a good resource for someone who's looking at buying one of these. Yep. Every, I would love Super Cruise and everything. I guess they're having such a chip shortage, they've pulled it out of the CT5 and a few other Cadillacs as well. Only the Escalade Literally, gets it. All of 25 except for near you gets it. Right, except for <laughs> near me, I know. <laughs> that's frustrating. Yeah. I don't get much benefit of the system. But look at how competent it's doing this. Yeah, we're starting to get to the windy bit, so we'll see... Yeah, we didn't really explain much of the test. you want to give us oh, the yeah, rundown? Yeah, so this is about 30 miles round trip, and we go through about 50 corners total. And we also go up and down in elevation, but the total gain, the net gain is 1,500 feet or so. So a lot of winding roads through I-70, of course. This is the most challenging section of I-70 in the country. Um, and yeah, it 
it's really the hardest part and it is always mapped at least so far so that's yep. why we chose it it's, it's good for all the cars and it really tests the systems and we've had good ones we've had pretty scary ones so we've had some great and some bad ones but look at this so well <laughs> oh it had a little confusion but i'll give it the pass it did a little Ooh, what yeah. should i do <laughs> Well, and to keep in mind, we're in a pickup truck. Like, I think with Rivian, with F-150 Lightning, people are kind of expecting like these, you know, okay, it should be tech focused. This is still a, a 6.2 liter push rod V8. Yeah. This is old school. Yeah. And it's got Super Cruise. Everyone's like, oh, of course, Model 3 can do this. And yeah, but right. this is big. But the BMW beat the Tesla systems in our test. Yeah. Which is surprising. That was partially because of the points we award initially up right because i don't think it actually did as well as yeah the tesla technically is better during had, the test had fewer issues during the test but, but i so will far, say this is we haven't had any well I, I took the model s to california which is currently not running and yep. <laughs> <laughs> and um basically had a, a ton of phantom braking events yep the whole way out and back especially on the way out more so than the way back Oh, it's auto lane change, looking looking for an opening. There's a car coming up in the left, left lane, but it's doing it, okay. That's nice, and I felt the left side of my seat vibrate, not the right. That's cool. This is always a tough section of road. Surprised that it initiated the lane change, even though we're pretty much going the same speed as that guy. Yeah. This is like gotta be the most relaxing way to get down a road. <laughs> The hands-free thing does make a big difference. That's what Blue Cruise taught me. I was like, wow, this is nice. This, this smokes is Blue's Cru way Blue better. Cruise. Yeah. Blue's Clues. Blue's <laughs> Cruise. <laughs> okay. Little hard right. This is where I want it to like just say, oh, there's a car on the right. Let's yep. hug the left side of the lane here. Yep. But it's doing it. Stayed over for emergency. I don't know yeah. if it's I don't know because if it, of that. I don't know if it ever voluntarily pops back into the right lane or if it just pulls itself out of the left lane. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm going to force a right lane change, which is just a, also a nice feature. You can do it mid-corner as well. Yep. I have to say this is the smoothest system we've ever tested in terms of just competence in a corner. Take a set line and just hold that set. I agree. Can't wait to try the Bolt. The Bolt might be like a secret winner. And the Bolt is one of the best value EVs on the market. It's so cheap. For a Super Cruise one, it's thirty-two grand. Before any credits? Before, well, they don't get any credits. Yeah. You get state credits on it. Okay. So in Colorado, it's twenty-nine grand. Wow. Or thirty grand. I think yeah. we get two two thousand now. But like, you can't beat that. Nope. Coming up on a slow semi again. Yeah, there always... is a car in the left. So let's see what it does here. I'm going to let it do its thing. So they're slowing down proportionally to us. I think to let us over. They've moved over. We've selected the auto lane change. So it doesn't really integrate all that well with other cars because what I would have done was just juice it a little bit and move over. Yep. It's doing it. It doesn't really seem phased by the rain. It, no, the rain doesn't seem to do anything to it. Man, imagine a diesel Escalade with this thing. <laughs> that would be the ultimate family road tripper. Yep. <laughs> Or if you can get it in a Denali, I would prefer a Denali than an Escalade. Yeah. I think it's less flashy. I think the Denali looks the best out of all of the you know big platform SUVs right now. I really like it. And so now the speed limit's gone 55. It didn't move down to it. So we're gonna just merge back over to the left lane and we have to go the speed limit. So sorry that we keep confusing this Toyota behind us, but that is the nature of our testing. Back to 55 miles an hour. And now we typically hold up the whole state of Colorado on the downhill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one really does the speed limit, it seems. No, you do 90. 90 is the speed limit. <laughs> wow, I am super impressed with Super Cruise. This is really relaxing. And it's just Mars, like, it, why can't it just do this good lane centering, which we know it can do, everywhere, just require hands on the wheel in areas that are not pre-mapped? Yeah. If it, yeah, if it could do it anywhere and had a capacitive wheel, I there's nothing that would beat this. Yeah, I'd be fine without a capacitive wheel. Yeah. It doesn't make all the difference in the world, I don't think. And it's even downshifting, so it doesn't ride the brakes the whole way. Smart. 
So now comes the hardest, really the hardest section because the tightest curvature. Right, some is, systems reach their limit, I think. Right, some have like a, a G-force limit, a steering input limit, Yeah. and I bet this will do it really well. I think so. Or it's just not gonna work at all. Yeah. <laughs> like it wouldn't work in the twisty section at the beginning of this trip. But we, have we had to take any points away other than it just not activating? Nope. Amazing. Super Cruise could win it all. Yeah, this is really... Right? Its points are lining up where it could... What's the highest we have? Uh, let's see. That was the BMW, which had 10. 10. And we're at what right now? 18. 18. I don't think we're going to subtract 8 points. I don't think so. But we'll see. But I'd be surprised. We've had some rough rides on the way back before. but Yeah, sometimes on the way back, the system does do worse. Yeah. But the one corner that's always tough, they just repainted the lines. Oh, okay. So we have to go back and rerun everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least the stuff that we can. Okay, this is tough. Cutting in tight, but it hasn't hit the line. Oh, no one's wow. to the left of us. Okay. So that, it gave you the warning. Does it shake your seat when it's it shook the that? seat? Okay. So that was a disengagement with warning. Yeah, so what is that? Minus two. And now it says unavailable. You have taken vehicle control. Yes, I have. Go back on Super Cruise. No road information. Aha. So we figured it out. It doesn't like the twisties. It yep. basically gave up. That was the end of its allowable. Interesting. So even though it claims it's fully mapped, I, I looked for any holes in the green line. There's no holes. I don't know if we could give this a complete score if it can't do the complete. We haven't had a vehicle be selective on this stretch yet. Yeah. Everything's tried. Yeah, I wonder if the Bolt will do it any better because it is smaller, shorter wheelbase and all that. It's possible. Let's go back on cruise control, back to 55. And it says, yeah, no road information. Interesting. Okay, so it just it, it, it has road information. It just doesn't like twisties. <laughs> well, that's kind of annoying. Yeah. I bet it would do these just fine. But wow, the way it shut off on that corner. That was, was a little scary. Pretty unacceptable. I mean, I'd let it go farther mm -hmm. because I knew no one was there. And I just wanted to see what it would do. But like. But it, so it shut off, but turned like too sharp. Turned right? like, it's like the mapping just went like made a U-turn. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the heck? And now that it's straightened out, what's it gonna do here? Let's just see. Maybe nothing. Maybe nothing. So here's our exit. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, nope. See if the way back has yeah. anything different. Okay, see if the way back. It's still a good video, still showing the benefits of Super Cruise, wow. but also the issues. When Super Cruise works though, yeah. no question, it's freaking awesome. I think they just need to expand its operating window. Yep. And the brake pedal in this truck is stellar. You're all, that's like the first thing you mention about every vehicle. Is the I was like, pedal? how's the EQS? Ah, oh, the brake pedal's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that's probably the, the biggest thing for me is pedal inputs. Mm -hmm. And they've done a great job with the throttle input. We'll trigger traction control here. Here it's tr 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 Good traction, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have like GM's performance traction management, which goes every time you get some wheel spin yeah. in like a Corvette or a spicy Camaro. All right, back to resume to 55 miles an hour. You can also, oh wait, it's yeah. on. Okay, it's going blue, it's looking for the lanes, looking for the lanes. It's not engaging, why are we not engaging? There, there we go. go, just needed to unload. <laughs> okay, so it wouldn't do it coming up but it's doing it on the way back. That makes no sense. Makes no sense. And I gotta set the speed limit to 55, which so is- This is where you said they repainted? Uh, no, coming that really hard oh, corner okay, yeah, up yeah. there, yeah. So let's see what it does here. It slowed down a little bit, it even shows a corner in the display. So it knows That's that it's cool. a tight corner. That's nice. So it can do tight corners. Yeah. If, as long as you're heading east. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, so it's slowed down to 52 miles an hour indicated, and it gives me all of this display in my instrument cluster and the head-up display. This is where they put the lines on. Uh, that's good. It's still holding us slow for the corner, so it's not accelerating and then going, whoa, I'm in a corner. It knows. Yep. That's good. And it's, wow, best really we've good. had so far through there. Best we've had. So when it works, it really freaking works. Yep. 
And it's still, I mean, we're doing 49 miles an hour. I have it set to 55. Doing six under, it still thinks it's curvy road. Yeah, but I guess it's just not trying to accelerate and brake. Mm -hmm. Just like, we'll take it easy. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't think it, the 50 is, it's five under. I don't think that's dangerously slow. Now the twisty road went away. You can hear the throttle kicking on. Will it bump the speed up to 65 miles an hour? Let's see, because we're passing the speed limit sign here. Didn't move over for that car in the shoulder. It doesn't legally have to, so that's okay. So it knows the speed limit went to 65, but it didn't change it. Yeah, didn't prompt you to change it either. Five, 65. And it's just using a lot of that torque. My feeling is like it's going wide open throttle, but it's not sending a kick down message to the transmission to go much above 32, 3300 RPM. Yeah. And I think it's for customer uh, quietness yeah. for NVH in the cabin. Man, when this system works, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I, this All this make, wants me to get is the, is the diesel long wheelbase Suburban GMC Escalade. Yeah. I, I, you know, whichever is the lowest one that allows Super Cruise. Because I'd go for a diesel high country Suburban or a Yukon XL Denali Ultimate, whatever, when that comes out yep. with this. We know they're going to do it. So if it goes red and has you take over, does it then have a timer? Like, could that have been what happened back there? Like, it just gave up on that one spot, and because of that, it needed to reset for a bit. Yes. But I've noticed it's only like 10 seconds. Yeah. So it wasn't the issue back there. Okay. Because then it was showing no road information. Yeah. Originally, it showed you've taken over. Yeah. That's that buffer. Yeah. And then it goes no road information. A bit frustrating. Yeah. So let's just do, oh, let's keep it in this lane because I want to see if it takes this exit. I doubt it will. The system's so good. Easy. <laughs> this is far superior to anything we've ever tried. And it's in a freaking pickup truck. I'd road trip this. Oh man, the road. I think, I bet you can get a Denali Ultimate with diesel. I haven't looked. I haven't shot a review of this truck. That wasn't the point. The point was for Super Cruise. But if you could get whatever that three liter inline six diesel is with this Super Cruise system, yep. that's the ultimate American road tripper. Yep. Over 30 MPG, thousand mile tank range. <laughs> and you just sit back and just, wow. Eat crazy. the miles as long as you look over there at the road. And as you come across someone slow, you don't even have to do anything. It just passes them, goes back. Just want to road trip this to Denali. It gives you the GPS coordinates of Denali so you can at least get there. Right. And it gives you them in many places, yeah. actually. So Three you'll, places, you'll, what I can If you're say. ever lost, you'll <laughs> only be able to make it to Denali National Park. <laughs> which I was just recently in Denali. And what a stellar place. We landed on a glacier this fit in here there a lot of Ford trucks there mm. which is surprising <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see very many Denali's in Denali mm. yep and I was looking I was like oh I gotta get the picture yep <laughs> I saw like one old GMT 800 or 700 like an old one Denali that was in the beige that everyone was in beige I want to take a Palisade to Palisade that would be all easy. the wine tasting and uh, tell your ride to tell your ride yep they're just down the road from each other. Yeah. And they're right here. Yep. And right here, I mean like four hours away. Yeah. <laughs> in our state. Down the road in Colorado. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there's a big rut here. I think it's going to fall into it. It's right in the edge. Yeah, it's not really trying to... Like, if it would just scooch a little bit or let yeah. you tell it to scooch, that yeah. was the great thing about the system and the ID5. Right, so Volkswagen software 3.1, at least in Europe, uh lets you move the car to the left or the right side of the lane and then it stays in that area yep. or the middle and what's really useful is in in germany and in other european countries when you have a, a traffic jam it's by law the left lane has to go full left and the other lanes merge right and you have an emergency lane that's between the farthest left lane and then whatever lane is to the right for emergency cars to come through and in the in every other driver assistance system except BMW and Volkswagen 
you put it on lane centering and the car just stays in the middle of the lane and yeah. you look like an idiot. <laughs> and a dude in a Tesla Model 3 was in front of me and I was moved over like I should be and this guy's just obviously on autopilot yeah. in the middle and a motorcycle cop came up, slammed on the brakes, knocked on the window and went, I don't know what he said, but Get some, over. whatever <laughs> over is in German and made the dude move over. I thought it was the funniest thing. That's awesome. And then in the ID5, we can just say, oh, we're in the left lane. Just go full left. Yep. And it's, it doesn't go far enough over, but it's enough where it's like, okay, yeah. keep an eye on the mirror. And if an emergency car comes, you can yeah. shove it. So that was a good system. So wow. no, no systems avoid potholes or anything. Because sometimes it's like there'd be an easy one to avoid and still stay in the lane. Never seen a system avoid a pothole. This just went for them. Yeah. <laughs> right there. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's a truck. But yeah. how is it doing this with one camera? That's what's so good. I don't understand how this could be so much better than other systems. And it's, you know, it's raining. The streets are a bit reflective to match the reflective lines. Like, yes. It's, it's objectively a bit harder now than it would be in dry. I would agree. But we haven't deducted only when it freaked out back then. Yeah. So good. <laughs> but I think we have to deduct at least four points for missing the first and last bits yeah, on the way out. That's what and I we'll have see right if now. it does anything continuing. Because the thing is, this test is like if your system can work and perform well here, it works anywhere. That's the idea. But also part of this test, that's for like our numbers test, is to just subjectively figure out yeah. the system. And this would be amazing through Kansas. Yep. Or similar. Which is mapped. <laughs> Which is mapped. So look, we're coming up on slow cars. I was gonna say, is it gonna change? It is. Turn signal on, changing lanes. It doesn't give me that information in the head-up display, the lane change. Oh. I would like to see that. And no fuss, it just moved over. So that would be the really annoying thing is I-70 through Kansas, obviously mapped. The one thing I think that it's lacking that I do want to subtract a point for is there's not enough auditory involvement. And I think that's by design. Yeah. But when the system needed me to take over, there was no noise. I had no idea. Over right. Here. You didn't know. I yeah. This was red and my seat was vibrating and that had a message. And if yeah. you go long enough, this woman's voice comes on and says, Hello, this is GMC, and you must take over. And it's like so long till she's done that you're yeah. already crashed and dead. <laughs> so it just needs like a beep, 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 beep. Yep. And I hate beeps and bongs, but I feel like it's kind of needed. Yeah. Should we see if we can lane change on the tight section? Yeah. Changing lanes. It's doing it. Holy smokes. Nice. Man, it put in some, some G-force there. Totally fine. Didn't even flinch. That's... No, I would say no other system with auto lane change would do it that smoothly. Yeah. See, like I was saying, that would be the annoying thing is I-70 through Kansas, obviously mapped. Of course, a few other roads are too, north and south. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that was close. I, I'm going to give it a minus one. All right. Because technically, if that line continued, yeah. we would have dipped over to the right. Sorry, what were you saying? Um, yeah, so... Sometimes I-70 closes in Kansas, and then you have to take a parallel highway, which is just as straight and boring, and then you can't use Blue Cruise. Right. Or, uh, or even Lane cruise. Centering. Or Super Cruise. Or yeah, even Lane all the names. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't they have a, a, a lawsuit against each other for a bit there? I don't know. Yeah, Super Cruise and sued Blue Cruise, or the other way around. That was kind of funny. Okay. That's great. They ended up just being like, okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Like, it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> It's like when automatic headlights were a thing. Yep. <laughs> uh, I think GM called it Twilight Sentinel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Everyone had their name. Now of it's course. just automatic headlights. Yep. This will just be lane centering. Yep. But it's new, so everything has to have a cool name. Wow. Loving Super Cruise. And I think, actually, if we think of this from a safety perspective, not taking the sharpest corners and making the driver drive for those makes the most amount of sense. Yeah. So while it can't necessarily do all of the hard tests we've thrown at it, what it is selecting to do is stuff that it's really good at and gives me a sense of confidence actually. Yeah. I mean a lot yeah, a lot of people would drive that section by themselves anyways. Right, exactly. And, and I think if I owned a vehicle, that wouldn't bother me. Yeah. I think my only issue, which we've discussed, is just the 
that it has to be pre-mapped to have any lane centering. I'm okay with pre-mapped for extra function, like, like Blue Cruise. Yeah, it's free. Right, where it's lane centering normally, and then in pre-mapped areas, hey, you don't have to touch the wheel. Here, it's like if you want any benefit of driver assistance, you need to have it on the wheel. So we're slowing down for this guy in front of us. There's a car left of us. Is it going to wait for him to pass before it does a lane change? Yes. Looking for an opening. Yep, there we go. That worked great. So good. It, it's like you always want to gauge these systems against how you would drive, and I would have done the same thing right there. I would have done the same, yeah, absolutely. And, and they're not ever going to be human-grade natural feeling. Yeah. Heading into, I guess, probably the sharpest bit on the way back. And right, the down clouds. here. Yeah, clouds, fog. I do have the headlights on. Forced manually. And I don't think it auto goes in the right lane. But if we were in the left lane, it would at least put us back in the middle. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. It has left lane hog control. Yep. Whatever. I don't think we have a name for that. <laughs> No Sunday driving. Yeah. And then this opens up and it did a marvelous job. So here's where it wouldn't let us activate on the way up. Yeah. But on the way down the hill, it hasn't given us any warnings yet, but it's coming in hot. Oh, a little bit of brake action. Doing it great. There are cars around, so I'm just holding the wheel, or covering the wheel, I should say, ready to take over. It's cutting in, riding the inside here with a truck that's coming wide, so that's not a good combination. Good thing we're both black for paint transfer. <laughs> Rubbin's racing. Did that perfectly. Great. We're almost done, too. Yeah, and I, I think... Yeah, we got like two more corners left. This is so impressive. And I love the green line on the wheel. That's pretty cool. Love it. This is the little eye tracking sensor down here. And I think there's also some in here as well. So Hummer EV also has Super Cruise. That would be interesting to try. It's I've so driven wide. it with that. Yeah, I did, a gr did a gr good job, really good job. But again, I had to like go out of my way to find a highway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, stay on the inside, GMC. Doing it fine. A little bit close. It's going to have to break. <laughs> It doesn't know we're going to get off here, so it may do an auto lane change, which I can cancel just by knocking the turn signal in either direction, I believe. Or at least for sure in the opposite direction. Is it going to go wide here and take our exit for us, like some systems? Of course not. It's just so good. It's too good. <laughs> and then we'll take that. We always appreciate when they take our uh, exits yeah. for us. Well, there we have it. The hog back. We do have to qualify with this with, there was about 15 or 20 percent of the run that it didn't do probably 15 percent yeah yeah i'd say 10 or 15 okay total. 10 or 15 percent so, of the hardest section yeah and it, it did really well though the total score is 13 points which technically beats the i4 but also i just feel like you i don't know if i can say this is the winner but did is that after we deducted the four points for the two sections it didn't do yep Wow. So, so it, even then, it's yeah, better. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So this this had the fewest takeovers of any car during our drive. Right. It had one takeover. That was really good. So, well done, Super Cruise. <laughs> Holy smokes. And it boils down to this. When it lets you work, it works better than any other system in terms of driving feel and comfort. Autopilot's really good, but autopilot's very in the moment kind of working the wheel yeah. in certain situations. This is just into a corner, puts the input in the wheel and holds it. Yep. So good. Really well, good. Especially with the limited hardware that this has. Yeah. I'm so impressed with Super Cruise. I can't wait to run the Bolt EUV. Stay tuned for that. Let us know if you like these hog backs and you want to see more. First time we've run Super Cruise, blown away. Really, really like it. Really like it. Just GMC, Chevy, Cadillac, all of GM. Make it available with basic lane centering on non-mapped highways. Then 
it would be the best system. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.